everyone. I want to um, take advantage of a not so hot some midsummer day. Uh, you know, we're in late July now, and uh, um, it I think it barely hit 80 degrees today. It's been a little off and on breeze, uh, lower humidity than what we've been experiencing. So I thought I'd come out and take um, uh, this opportunity to show you guys my uh, my kayak uh, configuration. Um, I know that whenever I'm you know, in the YouTube videos and such, I really enjoy looking at how people set their kayaks up. So I thought I would do the same thing. I'm not going to just show you my my primary kayak for saltwater fishing or, or lake fishing, but I'm also going to show you our, our our kayaks that we use. We live here on a creek; it's nearly the size of a river um, that we use on our larger creeks and we use on our rivers and some of our smaller lakes here in the area. Um, I'll show you our, our cheaper kind of beat around the beat around the brush type kayaks uh, um, in addition to this one. There's two configurations I run on this one. I'm getting ready to change from this configuration to the other, so uh, that's why I want to show you this video now. Um, this is my single person configuration. Um, an old friend of mine um, let me borrow his a couple years ago. He had a Frontier 12 uh, new canoe, and he let me borrow his, and um, I took it out to the to the uh, shore, uh, eastern shore, tidewater area, and uh, did some fishing up in the inlets there and had an epic trip um, and got to, to demo his kayak. And, you know, if you were to ask me what my primary, um, you know, uh, what the primary aspect I'm looking for in a kayak, it would be stability. And he was telling me I'm, I'm taller than six foot tall and I weigh more than 200 pounds. He outweighs me by quite a bit. He's a big fella. And he was telling me how he could spin all the way around and work a fish off the side of, boat, uh, off the, side of the kayak and not worry about flipping the kayak. And that, that was something that really sparked my interest. And so when I went out to the, the coast there and had this fishing trip, it was absolutely true. I mean, I felt very safe in, in, in the kayak, and, and that really resonated with me, so I knew I had to get one. So, after using his, I, I ordered one up. His was powered uh, by a trolling motor, which I also have for my tandem configuration, uh, but I knew that I wanted to power it uh, another way. Um, you know, you see all these Hobies with the pedal drives and different things, so I was looking at what New Canoe had out, and they have this pivot drive out. Um, so, I ended up getting a pivot drive, um, put on it and uh, I've, I've, I've taken it out uh, a few times and really really enjoy the pivot drive it's like it's like riding a bicycle um, you know it just you just <laughs> and, you, and you can go in reverse and it spins a, a propeller on the back and um, it has a really cool shifter here to where I can shift and it, you know it turns it uh, and because it's being turned from the rear you know transom area when you get all the way down on it it can do a really tight turn um, so um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the Hobies they have out now that can do the front and back. This will do the same thing. I can go in, I can back out, and I really like that about it. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys this configuration and the other kayaks with my handheld. Uh, so let's get started on that. All right, everyone, we're going to start at the front of the kayak and work our way back just to make sure I don't miss anything on it. Um, again, this is, the, uh, this is the new canoe Frontier 12. Um, and the first thing I have up here in the front is I have a yak attack. It's, uh, it's a boom for my uh, GoPro. allows me to, to push it up high and I can get kind of an elevated view back down of me as I'm fishing or going out through the water or what have you. I also have a smaller one down here for low angles um, for GoPros. Um, and that's just to help me get some good content, um, you know, get some good angles for content and such with you guys for future videos. Um, if I get in some super skinny water and I even, you know, I can't get this thing through it, um, you know, I'm, you know, with the, with the, um, cause the, the pivot drive comes down lower in the back and so does the trolling motor. So uh, there is situations where I might have to get out and pull it through a flat or something like that. I don't like to do it by the handle. I like to have a strap. It's just a lot easier to have a strap, um, to do that. Another thing I like about the strap is... I can bring it out here and I can use it to get up and down, you know, out of my seat. I can just pull myself up, lower myself down into the seat. It's just easier if I'm going to be standing a little bit, doing some uh, casting from a standing position. Um, this here is the dry box. Um, it's, a, well, it's a storage unit in the front, but I have a dry box in it. And, of course, I got emergency ponchos in case a storm or something whips up. I got a whistle in there and just some different things where I keep my wallet and stuff. I also keep my marine radio in here, extra pair of fish grippers, glow stick. I don't know, just mostly safety stuff and, and such would be inside there. Um, extra sunglasses and what have you, uh, sunscreen, um, things of that nature I'll put inside there. Um, but that goes into, into that, and then this thing comes over and latches and holds it down. 
Um, so that's the storage box in the front of it. Um, here I have a Low Rance Hook 5 um, fish finder. Don't really use it for finding fish so much. For me, it's just about water temperature and depth mainly. Um, and I want to know that as I'm approaching so I have it angled up to the front of the boat. But uh, I have it to where I can swing my transducer up out of the way. Um, once I get on the water, I can drop it down. And the transducer sits right about the same level as the bottom of the kayak. Um, so it's pretty cool in that, that regard. And it's got a, you know, it's got the screen there. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, I don't, you know, sometimes I want to see what the contour of the bottom looks like. But I don't really use it to see fish on there. Um, of course, I got a bilge pump. I don't think you should be out on a kayak or a boat or anything without a, a, a bilge pump. Um, you can manually, you know, pump water out of the hole in case something happens and I, I rupture the hole or something like that. And I, it can make the difference in reverend, whether or not you can get your kayak back into shore. Um, so I keep one of those with me at all times. Um, so over here to the side, I've got my pivot drive itself. Like I said, it's like riding a bicycle. Really cool. You can go front and back. It's super smooth. Very efficient. I mean, it's... I've been in situations where I'm at the mouth of an inlet, you know, dumping into the bay with a very strong coefficient or and headwinds on top of that, and I'm able to fight through that and not get tuckered out, you know, not get exhausted doing it. I can just stay steady on it, and I, I can get enough to get, get up out of there. All right, so uh, in addition to the you know, pivot drive being here in the front third of the boat, I've got a couple couple rod holders um, set up. Um, one of the things I really like is this, uh, the way I have my scissors set up on this retractable tractable cord you know i can you're all the time changing out baits and stuff tripping off tag ends and what have you and you can just let go of that and it just comes back up you can get right back to fishing so i really really like it that's pretty cool um, i have a, a cleat here the reason for that cleat is i can pull my pivot drive up if i get in skinny water i can pull it up i don't know if you can see it back here but it comes up and then i can just I, I cleat it off right there to hold it up a little bit um you know while i'm pulling through some skinny water or something like that we're paddling through some real skinny water. Um, so on the very side of it, this is, I love this setup here for, for fish. So um, the way I have this thing set up is I generally keep it to where I want the fish up close to the surface of the water in most most situations. I, I don't I don't care for having them, you know, real deep. Uh, you know, I don't want sharks or anything to be tempted to come up and get my fish. So I set it up to where, you know, I can put fish on here. I can put quite a few fish on, on that ring, uh, even trophy size fish. And I can sling, sling it off the side there. And those fish are going to stay pretty much on top. Um, if I have a, an issue with them being on top for some reason and I want to let them get a little bit deeper and I still yet don't want to take a chance of losing them, I can unbuckle this, this right here. And all of a sudden, they, you know, it comes out on the spring system. And it's attached to the rubber thing there. So it's got plenty of spring in it for the fish to just kind of bob around. I don't have to worry about them, you know, coming off there. And they're still yet not going to go very far from the boat um, unless they're super heavy. But even then, there's always tension on it. So I really like that system for, for keeping my fish. Really cool system. Another thing, I cannot imagine going out without. Uh, and that is an anchor trolley. This is the, the Yak Attacks version. I looked at getting Yak gear, but... Uh, Decided on this version just because it doesn't use a cleat like this, like Yacht Gear does. It uses a lever system, which is pretty cool. You can lock it up just by flipping that leather, lever, and then you can unlock it. And you can slide your anchor trolley. It's got anchor lines, two different, I run 10 foot and 20 foot anchor lines um, that I can clip on the D ring here. Um, and I, anything over 20 feet, I'm not trying to anchor anyway. I'm usually just drifting, uh, doing drifts. But uh, so yeah, I, I, I like my. I really like my daggone anchor trolley a lot. That thing is really neat to be able to slide your anchor all the way to the back or slide your anchor all the way to the front. You know, I have it to where it'll come all the way up to that point in the front. And then if I need it to come, it comes all the way back to this, this point in the back. So it really keep, keep you at some good angles for some fish in there. I really, really like it. Um, so coming on back a little further, this is the battery box, of course, for the low rants. Kind of out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. I like to, uh, you know, I like to keep my fish bag back here. I don't have it out here. I have a double line fish bag um, that I use, but uh, I like to keep it in behind the seats. Of course, I got my bump board. This 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 board is for we're getting ready to go on a, a flounder trip, and I'm not going to catch anything more than a 30 inch flounder. Uh, if I caught a 30 inch flounder, I'd be like, whoa! Uh, if I catch one over 20 inches, I'll be tickled to death. 
but I do have another bump board that goes up uh, to 60 inches so if, I, if I'm targeting something where I think I might get a bigger fish I can bring it out but this is going to be perfect for trout and flounder and such I might get on on this next trip um, keep a couple buoys here in case I decide to get up on alongside some bridge or something I don't want it to tear up the side of my kayak I can tie these things off swing them off to where you know anywhere where I think it's going to hit the bridge pylon or whatever it can help protect it got a dry bag back here always good to have that I like to keep towel and and stuff in there to dry off if I decide to do some swimming because I'm all I usually fish in stuff I can swim in. Um, so I, uh, of course, I'll, I'll keep a battery back here whenever I do the trolling motor setup. So this right here is the actual pivot drive. All right, so this right here is the actual pivot drive. Uh, it's really cool. You know, like I said, it controls your steering and everything from a lever I'll be showing you on the other side of the kayak here. But uh, it's got a propeller down at the bottom. And uh, if you hit a rock or something, it, it has a lock up here. It'll, it'll break free of the lock. It'll kick back to keep from damaging it. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, really like uh, the pivot drive on that thing, the way it's set up. And this is one of those, uh, got another rod holder back here, although most of the time I don't have a, a rod on it. I usually have a, a, a net on it. But I just got this net. It's one of those Yak Attack leverage nets. You know, you put your arm down in here in it. And use it for leverage i just got to figure out it, the way this thing is on the end i got to figure out how i'm going to carry it back here figure out a situation to carry it but uh and then of course this is the lever for uh for steering the pivot drive it's all controlled from here um i got me a drink holder here although i don't really use it for that much i usually just throw a bottle drink in the bottom um but i can keep uh you know hooks and stuff like that jig heads or different things inside there small things of uh of a fish scent and I want to put on, uh, you know, things like that uh, can go inside this cup holder. Um, and it also has cup holders here. You can, you can put, you know, drink inside that. It's got one of those on each side. Um, of course, I got my paddle and my paddle leash. Um, I can put a second paddle over so when I'm tandem, I have a second paddle over there. And uh, got a pretty good angler paddle, paddle here. So um, this trailer is custom made for the new canoe. I actually got it through new canoe. It's for the Frontier 12. So it's a really cool trailer. I really like it a lot. A lightweight, easy to pull. So that's pretty much my uh, my kayak setup um, for, for just me. When I'm going out and I'm not wanting to put it on a trolling motor, um, you know, I want to use my feet and such. This is the this is the setup that I use. I'm going to be changing this over to my tandem setup because, uh, like I said, my wife and I are getting ready to go on a flounder, tri flounder trip. We're going to be going out together on it. So uh, when I get it set up that way, I'll show you guys what it look like. What it looks like with the uh, tandem setup, and it's got a few different. You know, it's got a few differences. I run in a tandem setup that I can't do here with the pivot drive. All right, so I'm gonna show you our other kayaks that we use. These are our cheap kayaks. Our beat around the the brush and just you know taking all the creeks and rivers in the area try to get on trout and smallmouth and such and I, I actually took one of them out and did some fishing in the inlet some saltwater fishing this past year and it worked out really good uh, one of the people that i follow on youtube it's all he fishes out of and he goes out and catches giant uh you know sheep's head and and and, and black drum and red drum and such and he's always in one of these these are we got these from walmart one was at the time that we bought it it was 275 the other one was a 295. Um, one's a Tamarack and the other's a Tioga. They're pretty much the same thing. Uh, they just got a little different lid system for getting into the holes. About the only thing I can see that's a difference on them. But um, 10 foot kayaks, lifetime kayaks. Um, and, uh, I, you know, they don't have a real long. I think they got like a 30 to 31 inch cross beam. But they're relatively stable. Um, but they're a lot of fun to kind of beat around the brush and uh, beat around in the rivers and the creeks and such and not worry about I mean, you know, you rupture the hole or something in it, you're not out a whole heck of a lot. But there's some modifications that I made to them that I think make them a lot more fun uh, and a lot more efficient. So I want to show you those real quick and see what you think about them. All right, so we got some, uh, some different paddles and what come with it, some Ozark Trail paddles um, that match the, the kayaks there. Uh, they're a little bit better, better than the paddles that actually come with it. Of course, you know, everybody knows about putting crates on your vehicles, but we, I mean on your uh, kayaks, but we put, you know, crate in the front and, and also crates in the back uh, for storage. This is the net that I usually use for my saltwater stuff that I stick in the back here. I just have it back here on this one. We use smaller handheld nets. We have each of them 
that we generally use on these kayaks. But um, anyway, the biggest thing that I've done to these kayaks to make them a lot more fun and a lot more enjoyable, um, I'll show you here on Vicky's, um, is uh, is these stadium seats. Also from Walmart, twenty bucks. Uh, and you know some of these cushions that you can get just to make them a little bit more comfortable. You know, just bungeed on there. But uh, that's not even necessary. The, the stadium seat in and of itself is going to improve your qual the quality of your float dramatically. Allow you to spend a lot more time on the water and really, really enjoy this kayak more than the seats that it comes with. The seats that it comes with was lower down in there and just didn't support very well. Um, so I, I realized these stadium seats would fit really good um, in there and just kind of wired them in uh, to, work to where they wouldn't go anywhere. Um, you know, you can mount them however you see fit. I've seen guys that actually ratchet strap them in there different ways. But, um, but for me, I just wire them in there and, and they're not going to go anywhere. Um, we've, we've already been on a couple floats with, uh, I've been on several floats with, with mine, but uh, I've been on a couple floats with Vicky and hers and uh, it's worked out really, really well. Um, like I said, the Tioga has a little different system. Mine has a screw system on the Tamarack. Hers just has the bungee system, same front and back. Um, that, that's the only difference I really know in them, to be honest with you. They, they're pretty much the same kayak. Um, one of the main things that I did, I saw, not my idea, I saw it on, on YouTube, and uh, it, it's, and I think it's just brilliant, is um, some homemade scupper plugs. You know, these are those uh, uh, practice golf balls that you can get from Walmart, just foam golf balls. Buy a fish stringer that comes with a metal rod on the end of the fish stringer. I, I come up with that myself. I'm not sure how other people were doing it. But I got that, you know, come up with that as an easy way of poking a hole through it and running them through. So I just kind of fed them on there um, and until I had enough to where I had enough distance in between the paracord to be able to clip and tie off and then melt the ends. Um, and one fishing stringer and two bags of golf balls was enough to do every hole, uh, scupper hole, in these kayaks. So really, I think just a brilliant idea uh, for, for being able to plug up your scupper holes. Now, usually I leave these scupper holes unplugged. When we get on the water, they probably will be. Um, these ones here that's under the seat, man, I'm telling you right now, I <laughs> have no need for those whatsoever. The only thing they're good for is splashing water up on you. And certain times of year when the water's a little bit cooler, it'll wake you up. So I just don't have any use for, you know, water getting splashed all the way up my back um, when, I, when I'm going through uh, some, some rapids and such on the rivers and creeks. Um, so... And you might not want to have scuppers in the back as well, but these scuppers just stay in. We, we're not going to be taking them out. They're just going to stay in there. Um, so with the scupper plugs and the stadium seats the uh, and having the, um, the crates on there, th this is a much more enjoyable fishing kayak. It's got a couple rod holders in the back, as you can see. And like I said, we, when we go out, we usually just have one rod apiece. Um, they have rod attachment holders here. I don't have them out here. I should. But I don't they're in the building but uh, we use them um, they plug in right there and hold rods at different angles you can adjust for trolling or however just so it's easy to reach up and grab it fish put it up go through some rapids and, and what have you so those are really nice uh, hers comes with a newer version than what mine did and hers is actually a little bit better um, as far as a, a rod holder goes it's more akin to what I have on the new canoe over there so yeah with the um you know, with the addition of the stadium seats and, you know, having the crates for some extra storage space, uh, we really like these particular paddles as well. Um, you know, this kayak has, of course, the paddles that come with it will certainly work. Um, these these kayaks have, uh, you know, two rod holders in the back. Uh, we generally use one for a net and one for a rod. And then once we get the fishing, once we get to where we want to be at and get the fishing, you know, we'll put the rod holder attachments in here and use them. You can just pluck them in, go you know, go through some rapids or whatever, or go through some steel water paddling or what you need to do, and then you can just, you know, put put this back up. I will say that one of the other things that we did is put um, paddle holders on here. These, you know, doesn't come with these paddle holders. Um, we put them on there just because this little system that they have for holding a paddle, just being able to lay a paddle up there and bringing it over just was not sufficient at all. Um, so we put the paddle holders on there. That's another um, addition that we made to it. Um, the scupper plugs, you know, the homemade scupper plugs, absolutely awesome. Love those things. Another thing is I fill the holes of all the kayaks, even the Frontier 12. I, I have all the holes full of those oversized pool noodles. And that's just for extra buoyancy in the event that we rupture the hole in one of these things and we're, you know, off the shoreline or something a ways. You know, we don't have to worry about, you know, the kayak going all the way down to water, you know, the top of the water level there. You know, it's going to have a lot of buoyancy because these things are plum full of poop pool noodles that's just me being 
going over the top there a little bit just to make sure you know for safety um, but but they these kayaks will continue to float even if we rupture the hole on them um, and that's the same even with the Frontier 12 back there it's it's full of pool, no pool noodles in the hole as well um, so you know with, with all those um, uh, extra additions and such to it these are really good fishing kayaks for the money um, overall you know we probably don't have you know more than you know 350 to 370 bucks because uh, these paddles were only like $35 a piece uh, so we don't have a whole lot into each one of them um, so I think it's a really good setup for what we need it for um, and I'm thinking about buying one more next spring and setting it up exclusively for salt water um, and, and, and using it some in some of uh, different uh, situations out um, on the coast but uh, these are the again the the lifetime uh, it's the tamarack or the tioga uh, 10 foot uh, kayak and you can get them from tractor supplier or walmart or what have you all right here it is the tandem setup with both seats inside of it um, of course i put the extra throwable flotation device here i like to use these as like seat cushions and if something happens and you get kicked off the, the kayak um, then uh, you know the, the two flotation devices are going to come off with us uh, so you know you can you can grab them for safety I, I like that plus they makes uh, makes the seat more comfortable just to use them as a seat cushion uh, I've got the uh, I've already put the battery in got it all ready to go here with the low rants um, topped off battery in the cell block right there and then I put an additional battery in the dry box so uh, I've got that all ready to go um, get that powered off but uh, got the pole already set up um, for uh, a tandem rig tandem rig tied on uh, this next trip we're going to be going on is going to be mostly about flounder so uh, I've got that tied on hers and then I got the exact same set up on mine whatever I'm fishing she'll fish we might change up the colors a little bit but pretty much the same setups um, got her uh, extra paddle on here in case something happens to the trolling motor we both can paddle so it has two paddles on it now I have two batteries for the trolling motor this battery here is a high output battery it's a high it's, it's an expensive battery it's um, uh, probably going to last i'd say four to five hours if i'm running the trolling motor like on a three setting um if something happens and i've got to ramp it up to five you know because of headwind or current or something like that I, it's going to certainly cut into the time might just get two or three hours out of it but um if something happens and we're out and we're two or three miles away from the launch and we need to get back uh, and that battery starts running low on us then I can switch over to this battery which is completely topped off uh, and I know that this battery on a five setting I can run it for a solid hour so if something happens and we got to get our butts back to the the launch but storms whip you know moving in or something or you know um, we have some kind of issue that we got to get back pretty quick I know that I can just switch the juice over ramp this thing up on five and get the going um, talking about ramping it up on five i'll do that now and so the trolling motor it's one of those new ports new port vessels really lightweight uh trolling motor and on five that thing flat cooks i mean yeah, i can feel the wind blowing off that thing and it really really moves now, what i like about it is let me turn this thing off and i'll show you what i like about it is i bought the the, the short shaft and i adjusted the shaft to where coming off the bottom of the boat literally only about an inch and a half two inches of this bottom you know blade the prop um can um it uh be exposed so if we, we get in some super shallow or running aground with the kayak or something um i'm probably going to know it from that alone but if not then i'm gonna i'm gonna it's gonna hit just a little bit here on that blade and i'm gonna know to kick kick the trolling motor up so um i've got my fish bag back here in the back it's a cheap bag it's just i got four or five of them but it costs five dollars at walmart um and it's cooler line bag so it's made for put ice and keep stuff cold but i got a second liner inside of it that i put inside of it just to you know to get extra time out of your ice and really keep those fish cold through a long day of fishing um and really pretty much nothing else is any different to it the only other thing i could have done different to it well i did set this up to where vicky can have a, a rope to hold on to she can swing it around it's you know tethered off to the front she, if we get in some choppy weather and she just wants something to hold on to stable herself or if she wants to use it to stand up and sit down or something it can make it easier on her to do that um but the one thing that she didn't want i just brought her out here and showed her and asked her um is the casting bar i could have put it on if i needed to but she said she didn't want it this trip so it's not going to go with us but it's nice to have that as an option um you know in case i decide to use it in the future but that's pretty much it that's my uh that's my tandem setup for the kayak as it'll be for our next trip 
and uh, I'm really excited about um, taking Vicky fishing. I enjoy every opportunity I get to get her out, get her on some fishing, and this place that I'm taking her is really special. She hasn't been out there with me yet, so uh, I'm looking forward to showing her the area. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. I, I really enjoy, you know, seeing videos of people's kayak set up, so I thought I would share mine. Um, you know, I really enjoy kayaking. When I'm out on a kayak, I feel like I'm really in tune with nature. You know, it's usually quiet. You're either paddling or you're pedaling. Um, or even if you want to troll the motor, troll the motor, you know, it's quiet. I just feel very in, in tune with nature when I'm out there just kind of sneaking up on a grass flat. Or even when I'm, you know, going down through some rapids on a river or a creek trying to get a bite in that fast water. I just really enjoy kayaking. It's a lot of fun. Um, and it's something that's definitely going to be... Uh, uh, the, you know, I'm in the, the last third of my life and thinking about retirement in a few years, and it's definitely something I want to continue to do, with, um, you know, fishing off kayaks. But um, but anyway, I hope you enjoy the content um, uh, of the channel. Go in and take a look at it, and if you enjoy it, you know, please subscribe. Uh, make sure you hit that notification bell so you can see future content. Um, you know, share with your friends, see if they like it. I'd love to have them on there. Uh, you know, the more subscriptions I get, the more it motivates me to come up with some good stuff. Um, we do have a lot of trips planned in the future. Uh, you know, we want to at least get one more freshwater float done this, this summer. You know, we're in the latter part of uh, the very, very end of Ju July now. Um, but we want to get uh, another freshwater float done at least. And uh, might, go, might even go over to West Virginia for that. Um, but uh, have a trip planned in a couple weeks, uh, a flounder fishing trip. We're going to, you know, try to do some, do a flounder pounder trip out there and... Uh, and while we're doing that, while we're actually out there doing that, some of my pro staffers are going to be down Cripple Creek trying to get some of those big trout down at Cripple Creek. Um, the next month, I'll be going down to Cripple Creek with them also, but I'm also going to OBX for a full week. Um, so, you know, we hopefully I can put multiple videos together from the OBX trip um, and uh, get some good content on that trip. Um, so um, the month after that, the very beginning of the month, I'll be going back out to the Tidewater area, try to get on them gator trout again like I did last year. And then the end of the month, I may be going back down to OBX uh, before um, the end of the month, uh, before hunting season starts up in November. I'd like to get down there and maybe try for some redfish, just kind of finish up the saltwater fishing season. Might not be a finish up for me, though. I, I, I do have a friend of mine that's talking a little bit about going down south, uh, maybe down to Florida or something like that and doing some fishing later in the year. Um, so I would really enjoy that. But, um, but anyway, um, thanks a lot for watching. Tight lines and stay safe out on the water.